Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Learning Stethoscope. Today, let's dive into the amazing world of the control of respiration. Have you ever wondered how your body knows when to breathe, even when you're asleep? Well, breathing is mostly automatic. You breathe in and out, without even thinking about it. That's because your brainstem takes care of it. The brainstem is home to the respiratory centers, which are responsible for generating and regulating the rhythm of breathing. Let's take a closer look. Here's the brain and this is the brainstem, where the medulla oblongata sits. Within the medulla, we find the medullary respiratory center, which includes two groups of neurons, the dorsal respiratory group, located in the front, and the ventral respiratory group, located in the back. The dorsal respiratory group is primarily responsible for inspiration. It sends signals through neurons to the inspiratory muscles. Specifically, it sends signal through the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm and through the intercostal nerves to the external intercostal muscles. When these muscles contract, the diaphragm moves downward and the rib cage lifts, increasing thoracic volume and drawing air into the lungs. And that's how inspiration is started. So in short, the dorsal respiratory group sends signals to the inspiratory muscles, allowing us to breathe in. Now, at rest, normal expiration is usually a passive process. This means it doesn't require any active muscle contraction. Instead, it happens naturally due to the relaxation of the inspiratory muscles. The diaphragm relaxes and moves upward, and the external intercostal muscles relax, allowing the ribs to move downward. These changes, combined with the elastic recoil of the lungs and chest wall, gently push air out of the lungs. However, during forceful expiration, such as during exercise, coughing, or blowing out air, expiration becomes an active process. In these situations, the ventral respiratory group in the medulla becomes active. The ventral group contains both inspiratory and expiratory neurons and plays a key role in coordinating forceful breathing. It sends signals to activate the expiratory muscles, mainly the abdominal muscles, which contract and push the diaphragm upward, and to the internal intercostal muscles which pull the ribs downward. Both of these muscles help to push air out of the lungs. Just above the medulla, in the pons, lies the pontine respiratory center. Although this center doesn't initiate breathing, it can modulate the medullary centers. It sends signals to the medullary centers, adjusting the duration and smoothness of inspiration and expiration. The pontine center has two main components. The pneumotaxic center, that sends inhibitory signals to the dorsal respiratory group, and its main role is to help to terminate inspiration. By stopping the inspiratory signal at the appropriate time, it allows the transition from inspiration to expiration. This fine-tuning helps regulate the respiratory rate by controlling how long each breath lasts. In contrast, the apneustic center sends excitatory signals to the dorsal respiratory group, promoting and prolonging inspiration. Together, these two pontine centers help to regulate our breathing pattern. So how does the brain know when to breathe faster or slower? That's where chemoreceptors come in. These are sensory receptors that monitor levels of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and pH in the body. We have two main types of chemoreceptors. First, we have central chemoreceptors that are located in the brainstem, specifically in the medulla near the cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF. They detect changes in the pH of the CSF, which reflects the amount of CO2 in the blood. So, when blood CO2 levels rise, it crosses the blood-brain barrier and forms carbonic acid in the CSF, which then dissociates and lowers the pH. This acidic shift is detected by the central chemoreceptors, which then stimulate the respiratory centers to increase ventilation in order to try eliminate the CO2 in excess. Next, we have the peripheral chemoreceptors, meaning they exist outside of the brain. They are located in the carotid bodies at the bifurcation of the carotid arteries, and the aortic bodies in the aortic arch. These receptors respond primarily to low oxygen levels, but also to high CO2 and low pH. Signals from the carotid bodies are transmitted via the glossopharyngeal nerve, 
also known as cranial nerve 9, and from the aortic bodies via the vagus nerve or cranial nerve number 10, both targeting the medullary respiratory centers where they stimulate the respiratory centers. Here, breathing works through a negative feedback loop. Imagine your CO2 levels rise, like after holding your breath for some time. The chemoreceptors detect CO2 elevation and send signals to the respiratory centers, stimulating them to increase the ventilation rate. This causes you to breathe faster to eliminate that extra CO2. Once the levels return to normal, the stimulus disappears and your breathing slows down again, going back to its baseline rhythm. This continuous feedback ensures that your body maintains homeostasis. In addition to chemoreceptors, we have mechanoreceptors, particularly stretch receptors located in the lungs, airways, and chest wall. These are part of a protective mechanism known as the hearing Breuer reflex. When the lungs inflate during inspiration, these stretch receptors become activated and they send signals to the brainstem leading to the inhibition of the respiratory centers in order to stop further inspiration. This helps to prevent overinflation and protect the lungs. Now, while most breathing is automatic, you can also consciously control it. Whether you're speaking, singing, or diving underwater, your cerebral cortex can override the brainstem and modify your breathing pattern, but only temporarily. Eventually, as CO2 builds up, your automatic centers will take over again, forcing you to breathe and restore balance. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Learning Stethoscope. See you next time.